Geological record in time scale. Let's talk about how scientists build the geological record, how scientists know what's happened in the past and when, and where the geological time scale we're using now come from. Geology is very recent science, yes, when other science such as physics, mathematics, biology, older, but geology established only in 18th century. It's a relatively new science. At that time, all the science branches are developing and the people start noticing all physics law that we're discovering applied to the processes that are happening right now on a planet, and it's mean that were applied to our planet in the past. For example, if you see how the ripples formed in the riverbed today, similar processes should be happening in the past. And the first scientists start discovering that, that the environments we see right now on our planet, it wasn't always like that. The rocks tell us there was something different happening in this particular area, which is not like right now. And at that time, the old science was dominated by biblical chronology, biblical understanding that the Earth is about 6,000 years old. However, observing these processes we have in today, how long time it takes to form particular deposits, scientists had figured that it must be much, much older, our Earth, than we thought before. It was very revolutionized ideas at that time. The first scientific ideas was developed by James Hutton, geologist, and he published his first theory of the Earth work that outlined the basic principles of modern geology. And from that, we could argue that the Earth is much older. The first systems of rock records was developed by English geologist William Smith from his pioneer geological mapping that he did for building a series of canals to move a lot of goods around the England. In the places where the canals couldn't be naturally formed, people had to dig through the rocks, through the strata, all over the places in England. So William Smith was part of the scientist who had to map it to see where better to put the canal. What he started developing, what he started noticing, that the rocks that he's mapping are constantly repeating. So there's a repetition of the layers of the rocks by properties like colors, composition. And also he noticing that, that these layers of the rocks with particular properties have fossils in them. And the more he surveyed across the landscape of England, he could see this repetition of layers and layers of same rocks with same deposits in them. He was using the law of superposition, where the older rocks are under younger ones. And by repeatedly seeing same deposits from place to place, he started developing his own system where particular rocks or strata was divided into divisions. For example, if you come to one place and see particular fossils in deposit, he could relatively say that these deposits will be older or younger than others, because he's seen it in many other numerous places being under younger deposits, other deposits. Therefore, it was first reference scale in which Smith used to mapping the English deposits. Later, he discovered that the rocks could vary the color or slightly composition, but the fossils will be constantly repeating. Therefore, he concluded that these fossils, successions, could be used for relative age of the deposit. That's how the concept of relative age come up. These fossils, it's the ancient fauna remnants that Smith was finding in the rocks. And particular types of animals were living in particular time. So we could figure out that is first of all, it's happened a long time ago. And secondly, we can see how these types of animals change over the time, from older rocks to younger. Therefore, after that, scientists needed to do something with this 6,000 years old Earth. Obviously, looking on uh, processes and fauna development, the age of the Earth was pushed further and further, reaching 30,000 years at that time. Now we know that the Earth is about 4.6 billion years old, so 30,000 was not much. But in the times of very rigid ideas of creation of the Earth 6,000 years ago, that was revolutionary. That was the birth of first geological time scale. 
and still in modern days, we use it the same principles based on the fossils which link together ages of particular deposits. Since 18th century, people start cataloging the history of the Earth in deposits and fossils, remnants of the animals throughout the Earth. And the names which you find in geological timescale, usually they represent the places where deposits were discovered. For example, Jurassic system is a period distinguished by German scientists in 1839, based on a marine strata of the European Jura Mountains. Cretaceans named by the Belgium geologist comes from French word for chalk, on the kind of its characteristical chalk limestones in northwestern Europe. Today, all these countless refinements are regulated by international commission. The name of divisions, the ages of the divisions. So the Earth is about 4.5 billion years old. However, the most history we know and the more detailed description we have from sediment that survive on our planet, we have only for last half of the billion of years. Before the Precambrian period, divided in three eons, Hadean, Archean and Proterozoic, and we don't have much information about those times. We just have some reference dates for some reference fossils or events which help us to reconstruct what's happened on our planet. However, because most of the deposits have been recycled already on the surface of the Earth, we have very, very sparse evidence what happened back in the day. However, last 542 million years, we have more detailed reconstruction of what's happened. And the younger period we're talking about, the more evidence we found on the continents as are old rocks and fossils and evidence in the bottom of the ocean. How do you know the age of the deposits? And as I said, the, all the ages been created by the scientists with reference ages. We can say this period younger than that or that period definitely older than that. How we find out specific dates for particular periods, how long they were, when they started, when they finished. And that's when the dating, geological dating, is coming in place. Mostly radiometric dating can show us what's happening so far in the past. And radiometric dating only sparked after 1950s, very recently, thanks to modern scientific advances. Mostly we're using the method of radioactive decay when we measure the ratio of parent and daughter atoms or these physical traces created within minerals which measure this difference and you can say the last time the rock was formed or been exposed and it will show us the time since the rock radiometric clock was initially set we'll have a video about the dating of the rocks for now just come out with the idea that the geological time scale is a very recent concept even mostly built during the last 200 250 years by examining the rocks and fossils, and creating relative ages first, naming it from the names of the places where most of the presentative rocks were discovered, and eventually, in the last 50 years, scientists start refining this time scale by advances in dating techniques in geology.